Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a follow-up video. I have a video out there. I'll link it above somewhere where we essentially go over volumes inside of Azure. But I wanted to make a video that was a little bit more in depth. So first and foremost, I, I want to go through three things. Storage class, persistent volume claim, persistent volumes, and then calling volumes themselves. So storage class is essentially used if you don't want to use a persistent volume. Now you can use a storage class with a persistent volume, but it's not actually needed. A storage class pretty much says, hey, point me to this piece of storage. I want to be able to use any amount in the storage that's available. So for example, if you have 100 gigs available, you may have a volume that wants to pull 10 gigs of it, and that means you would have 90 gigs left. Now with a persistent volume, essentially what you're saying is, hey, I only have you know 100 gigs left. I'm gonna specify how much you can use. So storage class is kind of like dynamic storage. Use as much as you want. Persistent volume is like static storage where you can only use X amount that's available. And then a persistent volume claim is really around the idea of, okay, I have 100 gigs in my storage class. I want to claim 5 gigs for my pod. So you're pretty much saying as a user, hey, give me some storage out of here. And persistent volume claims work that way for either storage classes or persistent volumes. Now, I already have a AKS cluster running in Azure. So if I run kubectl get nodes, you can see that I have that right here. And then I also have a secret created. So kubectl get secrets. Notice how I have this Azure secret. Now the way that I created that secret was I have a storage account, resource group. I'm pulling the storage key and then I'm creating a secret based on that key. Now I also have inside of the storage account an Azure file share that's just called YouTube. So first things first, let's take a look at this YAML. I have some stuff commented out here, so don't worry about that. Really what we want to worry about is the deployment here. So I have a deployment. It's just a Nginx deployment, two replicas. But really what we care about is the volume mount and then the path. So I have the volume mounts here, which is just YouTube because that's the file share name. And then underneath the volume itself, notice how I'm calling upon Azure file and I'm specifying the secret name, the share name, and then if it's read only or not, I said false because I want to be able to write to it. Now notice that I don't have to set up a persistent volume claim, a persistent volume, a storage class, nothing. All I'm essentially doing is pointing this deployment, these pods to the Azure CSI the container storage interface, and I'm just authenticating to it via the secret. So if I run kubectl create minus F Azure volume CSI, that's created. I'll run kubectl get pods. Notice how they are already running. I'm going to run kubectl describe pods. Okay. Now notice if I go up here, you can see that under volumes, I'm specifying an Azure file. So I'm specifying Azure file as the CSI. Notice here how I highlight over it. It tells me exactly what it is. So I'm going to clear this. I'm going to run kubectl delete minus F Azure volume CSI. All right, let's delete that. Now let's go to the PVC and CS or SC example. Now I have this commented out, but I'll just uncomment it here. I'm not going to run it with the storage class because I already have a storage class on this cluster, but notice here how I'm setting up the storage class. I'm specifying that the provisioner is the container storage interface, the CSI for Azure file shares, specifying mount options, etc. Now notice here, I'm also creating a persistent volume claim. So what I'm saying is, give me some storage from the storage class. What storage class? The one that I'm setting up right here for Azure file. And then underneath deployment, 
take a look right here at volumes, I'm now specifying the Mount path as Mount Azure. Why? Because I'm specifying the persistent volume claim to just give me storage from the Azure file storage class. And by default for Azure files, the Mount path is slash Mount slash Azure. Whereas previously when we weren't specifying a persistent volume or storage class, we were doing slash YouTube because we were going directly to the file share itself. And then now notice here, I'm actually specifying now a persistent volume claim, which is of course specified right here under our persistent volume claim, but I'm not specifying the CSI. I'm specifying this in the same way that I would with like local storage, for example. So you can have a mount path for volumes that actually just saves the data, the pod data on your Kubernetes cluster itself. So if I go ahead and if I run this kubectl create minus F Azure volume PVC notice here how our persistent volume and our deployment was created kubectl get pods we see that our pods are running kubectl describe pods and now notice here how I now have a volume that's a persistent volume claim and not an Azure file volume clean because again I'm pointing to the persistent volume claim itself not the CSI itself rather the persistent volume claim is pointing to the CSI not the volume down here and with that that's a little bit of a more in-depth explanation of persistent volumes persistent volume claims CSI inside of Azure thank you so much for watching